To present our next inductee, please welcome uh, Homecoming Tri Director Grace Corley. Grace is a junior studying strategic communications from Kansas City. Grace? Okay. Born in Hawaii and raised in Arkansas, Debbie Turner proudly represented the state of Missouri in Miss America 1990 pageant while a third year student in the MU College of Veterinary Medicine. After earning her bachelor's degree from Arkansas State, Debbie applied to vet school at Kansas State, Louisiana State, and MU. Despite a full scholarship offer from Louisiana State, Debbie chose Mizzou. LSU's loss was truly our gain. <laughs> and when it came down to crown Miss America 1990, Mizzou's own Debbie Turner won. After carrying out her duties as Miss America, Debbie completed her DMV degree and went on to a successful career in broadcast journalism, leadership development, and motivational speaking. Debbie served as a correspondent for CBS News for 11 years before serving as a lead U.S. news anchor for Arise News, a global cable news network from 2013 to 2016. Currently, she can be seen as an expert contributor on the show's Dogs 101 on Animal Planet. She promotes responsible pet ownership and proper veterinary care through public service announcements, news features, and workshops. As a speaker, she has addressed audiences in the corporate, academic, and community service arenas. Her topics include personal excellence, determination, goal setting, and the importance of education. These beliefs reflect her own life lessons, and it took seven years, 11 tries, in two states before she was crowned Miss America. Now, Debbie is the CEO and founder of Debbie Turner Bell Consulting. She provides leadership development training to corporations and business leaders around the world in communications, influence, and diversity. Let's learn more about Debbie. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of a $20,000 scholarship and our first runner-up is Virginia Cha, Miss Maryland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your new Miss America, Debbie Turner, Miss Missouri. I first met Debbie uh, when uh, we were classmates together in, in veterinary school and we were um, in anatomy groups together, physiology groups, and then um, she moved on to fulfilling the duties for Miss America. Here to play a medley on the marimba, Debbie Turner, Miss Missouri. <laughs> Honestly, we, we fully expected that she was going to win. Not because of our expectations for her, uh, because we were putting too much pressure on her, but just because of her qualities. Well, of course, I knew she was a uh, Mizzou vet student when she was in Miss America. Everybody I knew was cheering for her. Uh, she just brought out so much enthusiasm for Mizzou people that we would have somebody so intelligent, so charming, so beautiful, that we were just thrilled when she, when she won. I'm going to meet a former Miss America. I'm going to be intimidated. And when you walk away after visiting with Debbie, there is no chance you're going to feel that way because she's been so sincere with you. Um, she's a real person. I might be letting a cat out of a bag. I don't know how many people knew I was Miss America around here. And so when people walk away, it's like, oh my word, she's a very genuine, very sincere person. No wonder she was our Miss America. No wonder she has been successful in the roles that she has played, both as a veterinarian, as a TV professional, as um, anything she's taken on. Well, you can put down the phone. It is time to ask <laughs> Dr. Debbie, a resident veterinarian and CBS News correspondent. Dr. Debbie Turner Bell is here to answer your pressing pet good questions morning. from across the country and around the web. Debbie, good morning. Let's see. What words would I use to describe my friend Debbie Turner Bell? Incredible, funny, 
smart, charming, fantastic. <laughs> Debbie's been very important in bringing awareness of veterinary medicine to the general public and the importance of veterinary medicine and the care of pets. She's so kind and she just exudes this feeling of warmth and uh, she just inspires you to be a better person. We have a lot of very prominent alumni that have done many wonderful things for the profession. To see her on TV, it's a little bit of a booster, an ego booster, and something you can turn around and say, I know that lady. She represents veterinary medicine, but she also represents the University of Missouri College of Veterinary Medicine. She's very proud to be a Mizzou grad, and she never hesitates to give credit to Mizzou. Congratulations, Debbie. Congratulations. Debbie, congratulations. We are extremely proud of you. We thank you for what you've done for the college, for the profession. Debbie, congratulations on this wonderful honor. It is so deserved. I'm very proud to call you a friend. Hope to see you soon. Okay. On behalf of the University of Missouri, it is my privilege to induct Debbie Turner Bell into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. First of all, thank you so much. Um, a lot of wonderful things have happened to me in my life, purely by the grace of God. And I'm so grateful for that, but this is amongst um, one of the most meaningful recognitions that I've received, even though it doesn't come with a crown. <laughs> I'll get over that. I'd like to thank uh, Todd, the alumni organization, Chancellor Cart Cartwright, Dr. Uh, Choi, President Choi, uh, my good friend Tom Hiles, development, uh, and for the committee for choosing me. I feel very humbled and honored by it. Congratulations to Will and to the family uh, of Sam Walton and the, res the representatives that are here from the Walmart Corporation. I'm honored to be in your company. And uh, I first of all just give uh, glory and honor where it's due in my life, and that is to my almighty and heavenly Father. I remember the first time that I was on the University of Missouri uh, Columbia campus. It was to uh, interview for a position as a student at the veterinary school, and my mother drove me up uh, to sit down with the, uh, in the interview, and I can remember all the way here up Highway 63 from Jonesboro, Arkansas, right into Columbia. It's one highway that goes the whole way. She was coaching me, be sure to sit up straight, be sure to cross your feet at your ankles, be sure not to use your hands too much, and don't talk too much, Debbie. Let them do some of the talking. Uh, and I was pretty uh, nervous about it because getting into veterinary school is no small feat. Uh, and there is not a veterinary school in Arkansas, so that mean, we, meant we had to compete with other students in states that had veterinary schools. And I knew that Louisiana State University was the best chance that I had because of a reciprocal agreement that the state had with Louisiana. But I wanted to come to Mizzou. I didn't even know it was called Mizzou back then. I wanted to come for two prevailing reasons. First of all, veterinary school was one of the most um, prestigious in the country in that there were, uh, it was the only veterinary school that had a two-year clinical rotation in training the veterinary students to become a veterinarian, and I wanted to be a part of that. Also, I was dating a guy in the pharmacy school at St. Louis. <laughs> so Mizzou was a little closer than LSU, I have to admit. Um, but I uh, remember getting the acceptance letters. I was accepted into the schools that I applied to. LSU did offer me a full ride, but again, I wanted to come to Mizzou. And uh, my mom, Gussie Turner, who is here in spirit and here in my body, I've turned into my mother. Um, so I remember being a little disappointed because I was offered a little bit of scholarship money, but nothing that would cover the cost that my family could not cover in order to attend. And she said, call them. Tell them about your offer at LSU and just see. And uh, I called then the Associate Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Kenneth Nehemiah, uh, who was one of my favorite people on earth. And I said, I want to come to your school, but we don't have the money. And I hadn't won Miss America yet. And I have this other offer. 
can you do more? And he said, I'll get back to you. And he called a few days later and uh, they did more. And it was enough to bring me here to the University of Missouri. So I'm eternally grateful for uh, Dr. Nehemiah and his efforts of advocacy to uh, make sure that I could attend. I'll take this opportunity since I brought him up. He's with my mom now, um, but his wonderful wife is here, Mrs. Nehemiah, and I wanna thank her so much. Will you just wave at everyone for coming? Thank you. I'd like to thank so many people that are so dear and so precious to me, and I'm trying to get through this without crying. Um, first of all, I, um, I'm not that big a deal in my family. I come from a high-performing family. Um, and they're a little sick of me in the pageant thing. I mean, you know, how long can you ride that trick pony? Come on. So I bring you greetings from my husband, Gerald Bell, uh, who is at home with my eight-year-old daughter, Lindley. Uh, my husband has a new big-time position, and his responsibilities didn't allow him to get away, and that was fine. Uh, I, we're used to that. We divide and conquer very often. I thought, no, no problem. I'll take my daughter out of school. I'll bring her. She'll get to see her mom's alma mater. Alas, she had just auditioned for and got two parts in an upcoming performance of Nutcracker in the ballet and would have missed uh, three rehearsals over the time it was going to take to come and go back. And if she missed that many rehearsals, she would lose her spot in uh, the ballet. So she said, Mommy, I love you, and I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> so they send their greetings to you, and they're so sorry that they cannot be here. But I am so thrilled that one of my mother's living sisters, who is not far uh, from here in Kansas City, is here. She canceled... Uh, commitments, drove from, uh, she was in Arkansas, and then went back home and then drove back here, canceled commitments to be here. I want to thank my Aunt Betty Berry for being here. <laughs> if you want to know what kind of student I really was, uh, you can go over to table number, what's, what is that, table number two over there, they can tell you. Many of my uh, instructors and professors from veterinary school uh, are here, and I want to thank you all. First of all, they've been supporters of mine and so enthusiastic in the times that I've returned to the, the campus. I won't start calling names, but I want to thank you all for coming uh, over. I want to thank my classmate, Joan Coates, who got on the phone with me a few weeks ago and said, what can I do to make your visit successful? What do you want me to set up? She was responsible for reaching out to uh, the professors and making sure that people were here Joan, thank you so much. I, there are a lot of very impressive people in this room, but I bet you nobody's smaller, smarter than Joan Coates right there. Uh, she was our number one student in, in our class, and I want to thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank my pageant family. When I came to the University of Missouri, I did have family in, in Jefferson City and in Kansas City and even in Kennett, Missouri, but nobody here in Columbia. And I was adopted by my pageant family. First of all, the, uh, the first person that I met in the Miss Missouri program was the executive director, Larry Weber. I'd been in the Miss Arkansas pageant, and um, because I was in school here, meant I was eligible to uh, per participate or compete in the state pageant. And so I met with him, and I said, I've competed in Arkansas before. I'd like to make it to the Miss America stage. Can I be in the pageant? And he was so gracious to me, and he made sure that I was connected with the local director here in Columbia, the Miss Columbia pageant, uh, and then went on to... Um, win the Miss Columbia, Miss Missouri, and his family became my family, and they got me ready for the Miss Missouri pageant. And I remember having a conversation with this man a couple weeks before I went to Atlantic City. I still needed to lose that five pounds uh, before going to compete on stage in swimsuit. Thank God that the girls don't have to do that anymore. Um, but I remember him sitting me down, and he goes, I think you can win this pageant, and he began to cry, and he said, but don't let a hamburger stand in your way. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> because I was on my way home to spend about uh, a long weekend with my mom, and he knew she was going to 
fatten me up with good home cooked meals and was scared that I was gonna come back and be too big for all my uh, uh, outfits. And we cried together in his office at, at Weber Pharmacy and I promised him that I would lose, not only not gain any weight, but I'd lose the five pounds and be ready to go to Atlantic City. And so I'd like to thank Larry Weber who came over from Mexico, Missouri, the former executive director of the Miss Missouri pageant uh, and truly a member of my family. Thank you for being here, Larry, I love you. Former board member of the Miss Missouri pageant is also here, Carol Gallagher. Thank you so much for being here. And also I'd like to thank another couple that became really my de facto family. They've seen me at my best and seen me at my worst. We've cried together, we've laughed together, we've prayed together. I didn't make it to all their children's christenings, but I was invited and um, was there as often as I could be. Uh, and uh, we love each other so much that we can tease each other cr mercilessly, as we did at the table today, about how many times each of us have gone to the other's hometown without calling the other. And I think I win in that car. But I'd like to thank uh, Mike and Barbie Nolte, who uh, were the executive directors of the Miss Columbia pageant, started me uh, on the local level on the path to the Miss America pageant. Um, barely before I even know I was receiving this honor, somehow Mike uh, found out and texted me and said, wild horses wouldn't keep us away. And so he's a very busy man, owns a very a successful business and has published two books and probably has another coming, um, but they took time to be here. So Barbie and Mike Nolte, thank you so much. I appreciate you, I love you. All right. I don't want to spend too much more time uh, standing here, but I thank you for this honor. I'm so proud to be uh, a, a Mizzou Tiger. Everywhere I've gone around the, the world, I've always been very happy to say that I went to the University of Missouri College of Veterinary Medicine. The big joke is that, of course, the J, the J School is uh, very well known here. So when I say that I went to Mizzou, many people assume that I went to the J School because I worked in television for 25 years. And then I said, no, I can spay a dog. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm proud. I'm very, very proud. I'd like to say this before I uh, sit down. I um, am proud of what this campus is doing to really be the university for Missouri. Um, if it were not for the support of then Dean Robert Cars and Associate Dean Kenneth Nehemiah, I would never have been able to fulfill my duties as Miss America. I was at, in my third year when I won the pageant, but way before then, when I stepped foot on this campus and I knew no one, had no family here, and I was, uh, when I came, one of two African Americans in the entire veterinary school. The uh, woman that was a senior when I was a freshman graduated after my freshman year, and for a year, I was the only African American in the entire veterinary school. But I was surrounded by um, professors, Dr. Chastain and, and uh, Dr. Moore and Dr. O'Brien, and, and the list goes on and on, that supported me and encouraged me. And, and Dr. Nehemiah, where I spend more hours than I can tell you about in his office, trying to figure out how to manage this workload and be in the pageant and how that, what that was gonna look like. But if Dean Cars and Dr. Nehemiah had not agreed with the faculty to allow me to take a year's leave of absence, I never would have been able to compete and have the chance to win the Miss America pageant. And so I'm deeply indebted to the College of Veterinary Medicine for that support that year. And they experienced more exposure and more media attention than they ever wanted. It was not as fun for them probably as it was for me at the time. And I really, really appreciate the school for that. I bring this up for this reason. It's because there were faculty and there were leaders on this campus that were willing to bet on a little brown girl from Jonesboro, Arkansas, who grew up in a single parent home that was lower middle class. I never starved, I was never naked, but we never had extras. I went to a land grant undergraduate university. I was really unremarkable, but there were people here that accepted me, that nurtured me, and when I got here, provided the guidance and counsel for me to have a successful stay on this campus. And so, I want to encourage us 
as a family, as a Mizzou family, to find some other little brown and black people who are from small towns, who have all the odds and the statistics against them and bring them here and nurture them. It's not just enough to admit them. You have to surround them with the, the support that's necessary so that they stay. Thank you. And I hope that I am an example of why those efforts are always worth it. I'll end with a story that I always love to tell about being here at the University of Missouri at the Veterinary School. When I finished my year as Miss America, I only had three clinical rotations left before graduation. And uh, the first one was called theriogenology. For those of you city folk that don't know, theriogenology is a $10 word that means reproduction. And so, <laughs> It was my job to go back and to learn the reproductive anatomy and physiology of the six major domestic animals that we learn about in veterinary school, particularly at that time. Pretty early on, I realized that my life was very different than my years Miss America. I was no longer riding in limos. I was no longer in the presidential suites at the best hotels. I was in coveralls and boot waders and my, uh, I was, you know, uh, shoulder deep in my work. <laughs> showed up at school one day and it was my, it was our job as students to go to the bull cell, which was at Trowbridge. I don't know if Trowbridge is still there. And it, it was our job as students to measure the circumference of the bulls. And I'm gonna say the word because it is a scientific word, testicles. Because it was scientifically proven that the circumference of a bull's testicles is related to his likelihood to impregnate a cow, which then is directly related to his value at the sale. And so I was down there at the wrong end of a shoot with my Calpers doing my job like everybody else. And there was no, I had no problem with doing the job, but one of my classmates told me that a couple of farmers had a conversation about me. One of them looked over and this was hot off my years, Miss America, and he recognized who I was. And he hunched his buddy who uh, looked and he recognized who I was, and he was a good old boy. And I'm told that uh, he adjusted his chaw. Let me say, well, hell, if I'd known Miss America was gonna be here, I would have left my bull at home and gone through the shoot myself. <laughs> so I'll simply say, adventures abound at the University of Missouri. God bless you. Thank you so much for this wonderful honor. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs>